good morning and welcome to New Hope Church Online. We're going to begin our service this morning with, with communion. So I'd love you to join with me, even though we can't join together in person, we are joined together in the spirit and, and we are united at this time as we just come and um, you know, join each other in communion. You know, on the cross, we know that Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. We know he terminated the law as a, uh, as a means of righteousness. He settled Satan's claim against us. And he also executed our carnal nature, or if you like, our old man. I want to read from a book by Derek Prince, which we are doing as a Bible study at the moment, and it's called By Grace Alone. And he talks about Christ executing our carnal nature. And I want to first read from Romans 6, 6, where it says, Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. With the death of Christ, our carnal nature, if you like, or our old man was executed. In his book, Derek Prince says the Greek text uses the simple past test tense, was crucified. This tense is used to describe a single historical event that happened once and was never to be repeated. See, friend, our old man or our old nature, which was causing us to sin, was crucified in Jesus Christ. And when he died on the cross, our old nature or our old man died with him. And it was a single event which was never to be repeated. That ended it. And he goes on to say this, instead of um, being done away with, he liked, to, Derek Prince said, a better way of putting was our old man was put out of operation. And because our old nature wasn't, so what he was saying was put out of operation, it wasn't killed forever, but it no longer has any power over us unless we want to go back to living out of our old nature and raising our old man from the dead. But we don't want to do that because it was our old man that was causing us to sin. And as long as the old man lives, he lives as the slave of sin. Reality is God has only one program for the old man. He doesn't send him to church, doesn't teach him the golden rules or ask him to memorise scripture. God's only program, Derek says, for the old man is to execute him. This is all that God can do for him. And Paul said this in, in, in Romans 6, 11, he says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified or our old man was put out of operation. And I want to tell you this morning, if God says your old man is dead, it is dead. And we must accept that and reckon ourselves to be dead, our old man to be dead, our old nature. Now, well, I know that the old nature tries to get back in every now and then. The old man times to raise himself up from the dead. I know it when I'm driving. The old man comes and I've got to tell him, you're dead. Get out of the way. But God says that our old nature has gone and we need to accept the simple truth and agree with that. And agree with God what he says about our old nature. You know, the work of the cross, once and for all, removed every barrier to the free flow of the grace of God for us and the entire world. And it was only by that amazing grace that one, our sins could be dealt with that the law was terminated as a means of righteousness 
It is by grace that, that Jesus settled Satan's claim against us. And it's by grace that he executed our carnal nature or our old man, which was causing us to sin. See, the cross was the basic requirement that set the grace of God in operation. So today, as we take communion, as we take communion, <laughs> I'll just get my beautiful assistant to help me here. And I'll take it with you. Reckon your old man and your old nature. Reckon as dead. God said it is dead. Don't allow it to come back to life. Because when that the old man was, was part of our life, we were just hopeless sinners. But Jesus paid the price. And he did away with our old man on the cross and our old nature. And it's no longer our old man that lives, but it's Jesus Christ who lives in us. So let's take communion this morning. Father, we just want to thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us, not only to execute the law, not only to execute sin, but to execute the nature that was causing us to sin and stopping us from having a relationship with you. We thank you for the cross and we thank you for amazing grace that we've been set free and we are free indeed. Amen. Amen. You know, there's people out there that have needs this morning. They have um, health needs. They have financial needs. They have needs in their marriage or just in their life. So we need to pray for them this morning. So, Father, we want to thank you this morning as we come together. We join our hearts together, even though we might, we're might we apart, but we are together in spirit this morning and in voice. Lord, as we pray for those that really need to know you, Lord, to need to know your salvation, we pray for those who need to know the healing God that you are and thank you for the healing power, Lord, as you send it out now, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for people who have to have breakthrough in their finances, in their marriage, in every, in every area of their life. And we thank you for that this morning, Father. You're the, you're the God of miracles. You're the God of breakthrough. You're the God of great love and the God of great grace. And for that, we just give you all the praise this morning, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, just got some announcements. Just bear with me for a moment and we'll get to those announcements. Let's have a look. Okay, we want to have a look. Thank you. Not <laughs> Okay. Welcome this morning. As I already said, welcome to New Hope Church Online this morning. Thank you for your patience and thank you for joining in. Uh, now, don't forget at the moment, as you would know, the government has changed the rules uh, regarding the COVID and, and, and how we are to operate as a church. Uh, if we were to go back to church right now, we would have to go to uh, the old way of um, having masks on. Uh, there would be no singing uh, and we would have to uh, adhere to a four square metre rule which means you couldn't sit together unless you're from the same family um, and you would have to wear a mask all the time. And even if we were outside in the, in the cafe, socially, you would have to have, you know, we'd have to be distanced. So uh, if, that, if we were to have church right now, we'll have church as it is. They were the conditions we would have to have church under. The prayer and intercession group on a Tuesday will not be meeting uh, this Tuesday um, as Judy and Robin are both in lockdown along with Pastor Colin Deb uh, and the intercessors will not be meeting this Tuesday but will be praying from home and invite you and all of us to pray with them. 
Men's Bible study is on this Tuesday with Pastor Cole. It's Maximising Manhood, and it will be on this Tuesday uh, from 4.30 to 5.30, uh, and you can see Pastor Cole or give Pastor Cole a call, and he will give you all the information that uh, you require to be able to hook into that. So that's on Tuesday, 4.30 to 5.30, Men's Bible Study, Maximising Manhood. Now, we, you know about the New Hope Outreach, working with Hope for You Ministries, ministering out into, the, into um, the, our, our neighbourhood and into the suburbs. And what we require at this stage is a co it's coats and, um, you know, jumpers and coats. They really require them, especially as winter and it's getting colder. So we would love you to donate to that. You can drop those off at the church when the church is open. Um, but please, make sure that the coats that you give are in good condition uh, and clean. Uh, and uh, it's just a blessing that these people are receiving from this ministry. But we are in need of coats just to keep people warm out there. Now, the Bible study that we are, as I was talking about this, out in communion with um, that we're doing every Wednesday with... Uh, um, by Grace Alone with Derek Prince. Uh, now we're going into um, uh, a bit of a. We won't be. We won't be online for the next two weeks, uh, which is the time of the school holidays. Glenda and I are going to be away through those times. Um, so we'll um, for the next two weeks we'll not be online for that Bible study, but we'll let you know when we're ready to go again. So, but it's a great time we're having in that uh, particular book with Derek Prince by Grace Alone but uh, we're going to just have a recess for two weeks. Now, the, the ladies' Bible study is on at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. every Friday at the church. Now, at this stage, um, I think that's still going to happen, but uh, we will need to just keep you informed of that. Uh, and I believe it's with, and it's with Pastor Sue, and I believe they're going to be studying Romans 12, 12 1, uh, Romans 12. Uh, chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. But we'll keep you more in touch with that. But at this stage, we believe that it might be still in the church. If there's any change, we will let you know, okay, and uh, you, we can that get past it to give you a call. Uh, if it's on, then ladies' lunch and craft afternoon, which is usually on every Friday afternoon from 12 o'clock onwards. Not sure if it's still going to be on over the next couple of weeks. But once again, uh, we will let you know exactly what's going to happen there. Now, um, the Australian Christian Lobby is, is asking us to sign a petition on how we can help end religious discrimination in Australia. There is a petition, uh, without me trying to read it all out to, out to you because there, there is a, it's, uh, it's pretty long, I, I would ask you to either give myself or Pastor Cole a ring and we will give you the information that you need to go online and sign that petition today. As we know, um, that religious discrimination is getting um, heavier all the time and that we need to be able to sign that petition so we can help end religious discrimination in Australia. Once again, if you need those, th those details on where to go to do that, either give myself or Pastor Collaring and we'll give you the details. Now, the Holy Spirit Night is down for next Sunday, the 4th of July. Now, at this stage, that's on hold. Um, until we have more clarification of when this lockdown will end. So, um, but it, you know, we, we once a month, every first Sunday, we have the Holy Spirit night at six o'clock. Uh, but next Sunday at this stage, it's not on. And we will let you know when we're ready to go with the Holy Spirit night once again. Once again, thank you for your faithful in your giving. Uh, there's, there's many ways that you can give. Um, you can go to newhopechurch.com.au and press the giving button or you can uh, bank right into it straight direct into our bank account and if you uh, need those details, you can give me a call on, and I will definitely help you out there. We'll give Pastor Cole a call and uh, we'll, push, you know, we'll, push, you know, we'll point you in the right direction for that. So, But once again, thank you for faithful in your giving. You're a generous church and, and you are a blessing. You really are. Join us on Facebook at New Hope Church, Caves Beach. And thank you once again. And are you ready? Let's welcome Pastor Cole as he comes this morning to share the gospel. Bless you. 
Well, good morning and welcome. Great to see you. What a great looking bunch you are. Anyway, I can't really see you because <laughs> we're online today and yes, church is not open because we've been caught up in the shutdown and Deb and I were in Gosford yesterday, Gosford area, and uh, we did a course and unfortunately uh, we got caught up in the shutdown rules and so we've got to rest for 14 days. <laughs> well, that's not such a bad thing. But anyway, great to have you here. And today's the last day of I Am The Lord That Heals You, which is our theme. And so if you can turn your Bibles with me up to Ex Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. And it says, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I'll put none of these diseases on you that are put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. So the thing about serving God is that he wants to be God. He wants to be the king of our lives. And and look, he's not going to compromise on that whatsoever. So so, you know, if we don't make him Lord of our lives, we're the ones who are going to miss out. I mean, God doesn't need us in that sense. God loves us and he loves us so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for us. So think about that. God's got to give us, uh, he, sorry, God has given us salvation. And so we need to reciprocate and give back to him. He sacrificed his life for us so that we could live and live in that place in God of blessing, what we, we commonly call salvation. But it's a, it's, it's a place of blessing. It's a place of life. It's a place of freedom. It's things that are really good for us that God wants to give us. And so we need to listen to his voice and we need to do the things that he wants and please him. You know, there's people out there that might say, you know, oh, you're preaching the law and all this kind of stuff. But it's not the law, it's life. It's, it's the life of God. You know, like we get the idea that we, that, you know, that grace is so great that we never have to obey anything, but that's not what it's all about. God's grace came to, so that we could move into the, the, the holy of holies, that, that, that presence of God where we could have that relationship. And so in order for us to have that relationship, we have to follow the teachings. We have to follow the directions that God gives to us so that we can benefit and take advantage of the blessings. By the way, there's only one camera before me today because of the shutdown. And so here I am. <laughs> okay, so I'm the Lord that heals you. And that was uh, Exodus 15, 26. So let's go to our next scripture. And it's from James uh, 5, 14. And it's talk, we're talking about healing today. So we're talking about sickness. And what I love about James is it says, is anyone sick among you? It's, it's just as emphatic about healing as any part of the Bible is. And so he's saying, if anyone is sick among you, then call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, he'll be forgiven. I mean, that's guaranteed. What's it saying there? Is anyone sick? Are you sick? I'm going to pray for you later on, but I just want to know, are you sick? If you're sick, then listen to this. Call the elders of the church. Now, you know, we need to belong to a church in order to be able to call the elders of the church. But um, we are a part of the church when we're in Jesus, yes. But, you know, elders tend to hang out in, in, in sub-churches. You know, not, I don't mean submarine churches. I mean, I mean churches that are part of the body of Christ, but, you know, we meet in different areas and those sorts of things. So call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Um, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he's committed any sins, he'll be forgiven. How awesome is that? So the Lord will raise you up. The Lord will raise you up and bless you. And what it is, is even now, as people are listening to this message, they're getting healed out there. I know it, because whenever I preach healing, people get healed, and it's a wonderful thing. And that's not something arrogantly that I'm saying. It's, it's that I'm preaching the Word of God. That's why people get healed. It's nothing to do with me. It's to do 
with the Word of God. It's to do with the power of God that comes upon you. And when we read Scripture, faith is released. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that's what we're doing today. We're giving you the Word of God. Okay, let's move along. And the next Scripture comes from Exodus again. And it's chapter 23, verse 25. And I'm reading down to verse 33. This is quite a long one, but I want to I want to do some explaining to you here. It says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take away sicknesses from among you. Isn't that wonderful? Now, what's the condition? Serve the Lord your God. The life comes when we serve God. The life comes when we're dedicated to God. We've got to be in love with God, folks. We've got to be in love with Him. We've got to, we've got to love on Him. And love is voluntary. You know, love can't be forced, so it can't be by the law. We, we respond to God with our hearts. And that's what causes God to go into action. We're not doing it out of law. We're doing it out of love. And love is is the thing that we need. Love is something that can only be given voluntarily. It can't be forced. And so we have to give that voluntarily to God. That's what, that's what the difference is between love and law. Law is a command. You do this or else. Love is, you know, if you love me and serve me with that love, then you will get the benefits that I offer you says the Lord. And that's, you know, that's that's Colin Grigg quote, but it's also what the Lord says in so many places as we're seeing here today. So verse 26 says, none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you and will throw into confusion all the people against whom you shall come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I mean, woo, that's what God's trying to give us. The enemies, the enemies that are in our land. You know, the children of Israel, they had to chase the enemies out of the land, as I've said a few times lately. But the fact is, we have to chase the enemies out of our land. And listen to this. If that's the truth, then this is amazing. Verse 28 says, And I will send hornets before you, which will drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. <laughs> Um, did you hate hornets before? I think you're falling in love with them now. And verse 29 says, I will not drive them out from before you in one year or else the land will become desolate and the wild beast will multiply against you. Now, I love that because what's it saying to us? All your enemies aren't going to go at once. You're not going to defeat all your enemies at once. They're going to go little by little. They're not going to go out in a year or else your land will be des desolate and wild beasts will multiply against you. So God, you know, we go through trials. We wonder why God doesn't work. Here's the answer right here, that God is working for us, for our best, so that we don't get overwhelmed, so that we don't get overpowered by the power of Satan, the power of of the spirits and the and the principalities and powers that would try to come against us otherwise. God is protecting us, folks, as we serve him, as we walk in him. And that's what he guarantees. So he says in verse 30, Little by little I'll drive them out from before you until you have increased and possess the land. Whoa. God's driving them out until we possess the land. Hallelujah. And I will set your border from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines. And here, you know, this is interesting too, because God is giving them the borders here of the promised land. And do you know what? You probably don't know this. Well, you may well do, but most people wouldn't know this. And that is that the land of Israel is far bigger than what it is today. This, this land that God promised goes all the way from the Sea of the Philistines, which is, which is the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea, and, from the, and, and to the, the wilderness, and through the wilderness, sorry, to the Euphrates. Do you know where the Euphrates is? It's, it's right over near Iran. And so that takes in Jordan, it takes in Iraq, it takes in all of those places, and God wants to give. You know what that says to me is? You're not possessing what God's provided for you. And God wants to give us more. He wants to give us blessing. He wants us to become powerful people. 
but we don't have the power. Why? Because we don't serve the Lord with all our heart and love him. And that's what God wants us to do. Please hear me today. This is not the law. This is not condemnation. This is life and that forevermore. Praise God. So verse 32 says, you will make no covenant with them and their gods. Now here he goes, you know, I just, I know, I know Paul said, you know, we, we've got to become like people so that we can win some, but we're not to become so like them that we, 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 we enter into depths with them because it says, don't make any covenant with them. Don't make friends with them. Yeah, hang out with them, but you be the influence. You be the influence. That's the important thing. And that's what God intends. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so verse 33, the last verse here, they shall not dwell in your land or else they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. You know, and that's the thing. We can get involved with their gods, with the things that they worship. Now, in Australia, we don't have a lot of idol worship. There's some. I've seen it. But there's stuff that's hidden and it's hidden in us who, who are the Anglo-Saxon type of people, you know, and we start to worship items of, of, of things that we buy, you know, some of our possessions, our assets, we worship, we can worship our house. My, when I was a kid, I used to laugh at a guy because he'd get out and sweep the ants off his path. <laughs> and now I stir my son because he's trying to grow great grass out, outside his place. But, you know, it's seriously, God doesn't want us to get involved in that kind of worship. He needs to be number one. He needs to be at the top in our lives. If he's not, then we're not really serving him. He can't be number two. He has to be number one. Okay, so what a great scripture, eh? And I just want to share a couple more as we go along. And the next one's from Deuteronomy 7.15, much shorter. It says, And the Lord will take away from you all sickness. Now, there it is again. But how will he do that? It's if we serve him. And none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you knew, will he inflict you, but he will lay them on those that you hate. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? Now, when God's talking about hate, it's, it's yes, it's hate, but it's also people that, that want to hurt you, people that come against you. And that's where that hate comes from. It, it, it talks about enemies and people who are against you. God's going to deal with them if we trust him and if we serve him. And that's where that verse leaves off. Praise God. So let's go to the next one. And Philippians 4.19. Now, I have quoted this more than once in my life. In fact, I wish I had a dollar for every, everything that I, um, every time that I'd said it. Praise God. And so my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Okay. God will supply all your need. All your need according to his riches in glory. When? When you love him with all your heart and soul and mind and strength, as Jesus said in Matthew 22, 37 to 40. We need to walk with him and serve him every single day. Praise God. Okay, so we've got some posters. And the first one is part of that, and prayer, power in prayer comes from believing God's promises. And I'm sorry if we're a bit out of kilter. We threw this together tonight. <laughs> and uh, so if we make a mistake, please forgive us. Okay, so the next one is, we normally have these up on screens. We don't have the screens available, obviously, here where we're working. So Isaiah 53, 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. Direct quote from Isaiah 53, 5. See, Jesus came and died for us, and he took those stripes, he took the whipping, okay, it's like a cat of nine tails. It was a thing that, that had metal tips and they were like claws and they would hit them and drag the flesh off his back. And that's why the Bible says his back was like a ploughed field. But 
the reason that he did that was to save us from sickness and diseases, praise God. And that's what it says there in Isaiah 53, 5. And you know, 1 Peter 2, 24, don't forget, it says, by his stripes you were healed. So it's already been done. He's done it. This was a prophecy. It's saying, by your stripes you are healed, talking in present tense, but in also in future tense, because it's a prophecy about the coming of Jesus and what he will do. But in 1 Peter 2, 24, it's talking about it in reverse. So it's saying, the healing has been provided. The power of the healing has been provided. So maybe we need to trust God a little bit more. Praise God. Okay, some more scriptures in the meantime. And uh, so Psalm 30 verse 2. And it said, Lord, uh, sorry, Psalm 30 verse 2. Sorry, I'm getting a bit lost here. Just bear with me. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Praise God. Psalm 30, verse 2, and it says, O oh Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Isn't that wonderful? That reminds me of Romans 10, 13, where it says, I, um, I cried, All who cry to the Lord will be saved. I got it right in the end. <laughs> All who cry to the Lord will be saved. This one says, O oh Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. I mean, healing is a type of salvation, isn't it? Praise God. I mean, we know that ultimately the most important thing is the salvation that we have through Jesus and the ultimate healing is that salvation. It's knowing you're going to heaven to be with Christ and God forevermore and that you're going to live forever and there'll be no more sickness, no more pain. And that's the main thing. That's the main thing. It's wonderful to get healing. It's wonderful to, to be healed and God provided for that. That's why I preach it because God wants us to partake of the blessings that he pours out. Okay, let's go to another scripture. And the next one is Matthew 4, 23 to 24. And it says, And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. See, Jesus healed all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. And we have that same power, the same power that dwelt in Christ. You know, it, it, it dwells in us. And Jesus said, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. You know, if we don't go to Jesus for that power, if we're trying to take that power on ourselves, we're not going to win, folks. We're not going to see things happen. We, and our faith's going to drop, you know, with Jesus, without Jesus, with Jesus, without Jesus. We saw that in a movie once. Sorry about that. But, you know, things go better with Jesus. Life goes better with Jesus. Why wouldn't you fall in love with God when he gives you such abundant life and such blessing poured out abundantly? And that's what he wants for us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Okay, next scripture. And this is our last scripture for today. And it comes from Psalm 73, 26. And it's another short reading. And it says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. My flesh and my heart may fail. You know, God knows our weaknesses. Do I believe and never doubt? Never. <laughs> I always doubt. But you know what we need to do? We need to return to belief. You know, there's a, an old saying that I learned when I was a brand new Christian, and it was like, when it comes to sin, keep short accounts with God. If you sin, confess it quick, get it out of the way, and reestablish your relationship with God, because God can't look on sin. But it's the same in this situation that what we need to do when our heart fails, when, our, when doubts come in, we need to ask God's forgiveness straight away because doubt is a type of sin. You know, unbelievers will be at the lake of fire. They'll be at the great white throne of judgment and they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. So please don't be an unbeliever. Even if you become a Christian, have you slipped into unbelief? Are you doubting God? You know, the one thing I know above all things is that we need to be obedient to God and we need to believe him. Praise God. 
That's the two main things we need in order to serve God and walk with him and get his blessings every day. Praise God. He actually goes everywhere with you and protects you and keeps you. And Look, I know there's Christians who suffer from, from different things, pains, and I know there's Christians who get sick and there's Christians who die from illnesses and those sorts of things. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but there is the power of healing out there in God. And why not tap into it? Why not get some of it? I tell you what, even if God doesn't heal you, God will provide an escape for you that makes you understand why that's there. And, 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 and who knows, it might be for, for a witness to others as you keep your faith. They see you sick and you still believe in God. That, that's a, a witness in itself. They, it might be a witness to people in another sense. And there's, there's a number of ways that it can be. And, but God uses it, you know. And one of, our, one of our posters coming up says something like that. So let's go to our next poster. And, and it says, If God answers your prayer, he is increasing your faith. If he delays, he's increasing your patience. If he doesn't answer your prayer, he's preparing you for the best. Isn't that great? Want me to say that again? You can see it there and read it for yourself. If God answers your prayer, he's increasing your faith. If he delays, he's increasing your patience. If he doesn't answer your prayer, he's preparing you for the best. Isn't that great? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The next one is very simple. Be free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. And God has made you free tonight in Jesus' name. Praise God. Also, healing begins the moment you accept that things will never be the same and believe that they will be even better than before. Praise God. How awesome is that? Okay, not quite finished yet. Up there, you can see a prayer of healing. And I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray this healing prayer for you. It's a great prayer. It's, it's by a, a, a Christian from years ago who was a padre, and it's padre, um, I can't remember his name now, Leo, or something like that, sorry. I haven't got my resources in front of me. But anyway, um, let's pray this prayer. And, and, and if, you're, if you're sick tonight, if you have some disease today, then I want to pray for you. Sorry, I'm actually recording this in the night. So that's why I keep saying that. I'm sorry, but this is what COVID has done to us, praise God. But God's getting the glory, amen? So I'm praying a prayer of healing for you. And you know, even years ago, as I listened to tapes of preachers, it didn't matter whether they'd preached it a week before, a month before, a year before, or even years before, I've seen people get healed and I've gotten healed and gotten revelations and, and anointings. And, you know, the Word of God's like that. It's already there, but the, the Holy Spirit moves on it. And the Holy Spirit can move upon you through this recording today. So I want you to get your healing today. So would you stand with me right now? If you need healing, stand with me, please. And lift your hands to God with one hand and put the other hand on the part where you need healing. Now, it might be your heart, or it might be your back, or it might be a leg, or it might be an arm, or something like that. But just put your hand there. And all I want you to do now is not focus on me. What I want you to do is close your eyes. But I want you to listen to me, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. Now, you don't know the words to it. It's, it's a fairly long prayer, but just listen to the meaning of it and keep saying amen, okay? Amen means so be it with me, Lord. Okay, so you ready? Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we love you. We thank you. And Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to the world to save and set me free. I trust in your power and grace that sustain and restore me. Loving Father, touch me now with your healing hands, for I believe that your will is for me to be well in mind, body, soul, and spirit. Cover me, Lord, with the most precious blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Cast anything that should not be in me. Root out any unhealthy and abnormal cells. 
open any blocked arteries or veins, and rebuild and replenish any damaged areas. Remove all inflammation and cleanse any infection by the power of Jesus' blood. Let the fire of your healing love pass through my entire body to heal and make new any diseased areas so that my body will function the way you created it to function. Touch also my mind and my emotion, even the deepest recesses of my heart. Saturate my entire being with your presence, love, joy and peace and draw me ever closer to you every moment of my life. And Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit and empower me to do your works so that my life will bring glory and honour to your holy name. I ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I just want to pray for you my own words. So as I reach towards you, just reach out in the Spirit for that answer. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray you just touch those people that are out there this day. And Lord, as they're putting their hand on that area, I just thank you for healing in Jesus' name. Lord, when you, when you went to the cross, you took those stripes. Your back was like a plow field, Lord. It was painful. You suffered greatly, probably, probably just as much, if not more, with those stripes than you did on the cross. But Lord, that doesn't lessen our appreciation of what you did for us. But we just thank you, Lord, for healing power. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for your love and goodness today in Jesus' precious name. And Lord, we're careful to give you, Lord, all the glory and all the praise because it belongs to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. A couple more posters before we go. And uh, the next one is... Believe in miracles. You know, I just thought I'd put a couple of simple statements up tonight. Believe in miracles. That's, those words can just, Holy Spirit can just touch those and touch you through it. And here's a quote from Kenneth Copeland. Haven't heard from him for a while, but I love this quote. It says, what Jesus said yesterday, he's still saying today. Hallelujah. The Word of God is the same yesterday today and forever. Praise God. Okay, next one. I have a big God that can do big miracles. Yeah, but are you tapping from the bigness of God? Are you tapping from that potential? Are you getting those enemies out of your land? Are you expanding your tent ropes? Is your land growing? You know, don't be squashed in by other countries or other enemies like Israel. But please, be free. Believe in miracles. See the power of God working in you. And the love and the power of God will overwhelm you as you trust in Him and, and endeavor not to sin any longer. Look, I know we sin just by the nature that's within us. But let's keep those short accounts. Let's confess our sins to Jesus. Let's reestablish our rightness with Him and give ourselves 100% chance of getting better, of overcoming our enemies and of winning the battles. Praise God. Well, thank you for being with me tonight, today. Whoops. <laughs> and uh, it's great. Thank you so much. And though this is just an example of what God can do when the world fails you. So praise God for tonight. Praise God for you. And uh, by the way, Pastor Graham was on before, and I just want to wish him today, and it is today, Sunday, the 27th of, 27th, <laughs> the 27th of June, 2021. Graham, happy birthday, mate. We had a cake going, we had candles, we had everything. And now we have shut down. <laughs> so, mate, I'm sorry. Have a happy birthday, Graham. Sorry we can't be together today, but, you know, thanks so much for recording and doing that, that hosting and sharing communion with everyone, as well as just giving us the announcements. So bless you all, and uh, hopefully we're back in our church building soon. And God bless you. Have a great day and have a blessed week with Jesus. Bye for now.